Hello, book team. Hello, friends. Welcome to Lizzie Fay Loves Books. I'm Elizabeth. And as you can see, I am home. I'm super excited to be home. Emily is home. She is doing pretty well considering she's still not walking yet. We do have a wheelchair. We have physical therapy scheduled to start coming tomorrow. And she's in her room right now resting. And so I thought I would just take a minute to film. Now, I am... Oh my goodness, I'm so behind on everything I want to film. I have some really fun ideas for future videos. In fact, this is going to be the first of kind of a new series I'm starting. And I need to be filming my mid-month wrap-up or Friday reads or something. But I don't want to do that right now. I am really excited about the series that I want to start. And so I want to show you the first video today. Now, I am going to go ahead and film a mid-month wrap-up today. And I will hope to get that edited and done very soon. But right now, I'm filming on my phone, which means I don't know how to edit from my phone. And so I'm going to try to do this in one shot. But I've started thinking a lot about book titles. And I thought that at first I would just kind of do my top 10 book titles from my shelf or my favorite book titles or whatever. And I started looking and I realized that I have enough really awesome book titles that I can divide that into about at least three, maybe four videos. So what I want to do today is show you the book that inspired this whole idea. And because it's nonfiction, it's a humorous book, fits into the whole nonfiction category. I want to show you my top 15, maybe, nonfiction books. of. Well, I want to show you my top titles of nonfiction books that I have found on my shelves. And so these are not probably not the top 10 most favorite titles of all time, but they're what I have on my shelf and they are my favorites for one reason or another. And most of the time it's because they're humorous. They have, they're written in such a way that they pulled me in and made me want to buy this book. And so I want to show them to you. So there are a few different categories. So let's start with humor. Now you may recall when I did my travel vlog, one of the books I picked up, I said I bought it only because of the title. And this is the book that has inspired this video. This is Sue Ellen's A Girl Ain't Fat, She Just Weighs Heavy, by Shelley Rushing Tomlinson. I have not read this book yet. I just got it. I don't know anything about it other than the fact that it says it's laugh out loud funny, according to Jeff Foxworthy, who's a pretty funny guy himself. And I love this title. It's very Southern. It's humorous. It has a lot of words. I tend to notice that the titles I think are the funniest or the best or what really pull me in have a lot of words. Now, you might recall The Reading Rush had a challenge to read a book with a title that was more than five, that was five or more words. And so a lot of these are going to fall into that category because there's just something really fun about a title with a lot of words. I don't know why that is, but they are, they draw me in. Not all of these have a lot of words, but I would say most of them do. So anyway, this is what inspired this video. Sue Ellen's Girl Ain't Fat. She just weighs heavy. And let me show you a few other humorous books that I think fall into this really awesome title category. So a couple of books that I have just picked up at yard sales, or not yard sales, uh, book sales, library book sales and whatnot, that are just funny sounding, and I think they're meant to be funny books, and the titles are amazing. Here is Pop Lollies and Belly Bones. Of course, this is funny because the words themselves are just pretty funny, and it says this book is a celebration of lost words by Susan Kells Sperling. I don't know anything about this book other than what I just read you in the title, but I think it's an awesome title, and those are amazing words. I really want to know what those words mean. And then another one that is just very country-sounding, and I think it sounds amazing, 
Pot Liquor, Pulley Bones, and Peavine Hay by Faye Brown. And Faye spells her name just like I do. Like my middle name is Faye with an E on the end. So I think that also kind of made me want to pick up this book. And I think this book might be... Poems? Actually, no. This is just little vignettes, just little humorous stories, and it sounds really fun. So then on my shelf, you may notice there's a, a space missing up here, because I had one up here that I got not too long ago. It's called If Nothing Don't Happen by David M. Newell. That's another type of title that draws me in. Titles that use poor grammar or bad grammar. I try not to use poor grammar, but put it in a book title and I'm all there. Like I heard Ann Bogle talk about one on her podcast called, um, oh goodness, what's the name of it? Oh, These Is My Words. And I just found that in the library the other day because I spotted the sequel, which is Sarah's Quilt. And I thought, oh, that looks like a good book. And then I saw, oh, this is the sequel to These Is My Words. And then that reminded me that I wanted to look up that book and recommend it to our book club leader. So I, I added that to our book club list for next year, you know, as a possible thing. So anyway, that is a fiction book, so it's not going to be included in this. Plus, I don't own it. But it's actually made, it's written as if it's a diary. So it's written like it's nonfiction. But anyway, that just, I'm just talking about that now because that is a title where there is poor grammar and there's just something about that that draws me in, just like this. If nothing don't happen. So this, I think, is just a funny book. It may be one story. It may be little vignettes. But uh, I really don't know. <laughs> like, the chapter names. Um, Our first fire hunt and Uncle Winston's soul. That's chapter three. Chapter five. Ducks, coots, and buck rays turkey. So it's just going to be really fun. S chapter six. Mumps, mixed up medicine, and the three mysteries. I don't know. I love stuff like that. So I don't read enough of it either, and I really want to get some of these books read. Because as of right, as of this moment, I have not read any of the books I've shown you so far. There are two or three books in this stack that I have read, and I'll tell you when I get to those. Actually, there's just one book in this stack. No, two books in this whole stack that I've read. But anyway, I'm still drawn to these books, and I want to read them. So this is one that I got not too long ago. This is another one that uses poor grammar, but this starts in a different category. This is the memoir category. Something about memoirs give people the ability to, to write a really good title. I don't know if the people who write the book come up with the title or the publisher or if it's a, you know, it's probably a collaboration, but this title is the only reason I bought this book. Burnt Toast Makes You Sing Good. Does it? I don't know, <laughs> but I love the title. It's got food in the title, which is one of my bookish boxes and buzzwords. By the way, this whole video idea kind of stems from my bookish boxes and buzzwords because these are things in titles that draw me in. If you've never seen that video, it's on my channel. I will put a link below. It's a tag video that I created and quite a few people on booktube have done the tag and it's a lot of fun. So I hope that uh, you will watch it. If you haven't seen it, look it up, watch some others. And if you want to do it, if you do videos and you want to do the tag, then I hope you will. So anyway, one of my bookish buzzwords is food in the title of a book. So this one just really drew me in. Plus, I love the old car on the front. This says it's a memoir of food and love from an American Midwest family, and it's by Kathleen Flynn. So again, this title, what can I say? It's great. So then a few other honorable mentions for memoirs. This one you've probably seen at Walmart because it's the Pioneer Woman. But did you know she has a memoir called Black Heels and Tractor Wheels? Now, this has actually been out quite a while, but it has been re-released, I think, in paperback. So I've seen it recently in Walmart. And it's her memoir, and I think it's got a great title. Then another one that 
I think hits the honorable mention list. I didn't buy this book because of the title. I bought it because I wanted to read about this actress. I was a Guiding Light fan. And this is Kim Zimmer's book called, I'm just saying, Three Deaths, Seven Husbands and a Clone, My Life on Guiding Light and Beyond. So Kim Zimmer played Reba Shane. Uh, did I say Reba? Reba is a different person. <laughs> Reba. Kim Zimmer played Reba. Oh, Bob. My dog Bob just knocked over a clock that had come off the wall to get a new battery and somehow the battery didn't make it in the clock and the clock didn't make it back on the wall so Bob has tripped on it. Anyway, so Reva Shane is the character is a one of the main characters from Guiding Light and this all of these things in the subtitle happen to the Reva Shane character on Guiding Light. So this is a fun title and it really made me want to get the book. <clears throat> and then I have two editions of another memoir that are the same book, but they have two different titles. Both are equally great. And I looked to see which one came first. And it's weird because it seems like they both came out like within within a, a year or two of each other. And I don't know which was the first one, even according to the, um, according to the year. I don't know. It's like... Um, it didn't make any sense. I, I kept trying to figure out which one came first. Anyway, the book, the title that I love the most is Does This Church Make Me Look Fat by Rhoda Jansen. I think this was the original title because I saw an arc of this first. In fact, when I was doing book sales at the public library, I first ran across an arc and it had this title. So this must have been the original title. I passed that one on to my sister and I think she is done with it because I saw it in her... Um, um, yard sale bin or something. I don't know. I saw it in her giveaway bin. Anyway, or maybe even her, um, I need to tell her she can't sell it. I think she's got it in her antique mall. Charlie, you can't sell that book. It's an arc. Anyway, um, it's called Does This Church Make Me Look Fat? And this is a memoir. It says, a Mennonite finds faith, meets Mr. Wright, and solves her lady problems. So the other title, same book, also a great title, Mennonite Meets Mr. Wright by Rhoda Jansen. So I love both of these covers equally, and I, I first got them because I didn't realize they were the same book, and then I realized they were the same book, and I couldn't decide which one I like better because I like both both covers a lot. This one probably more than the other, but still I really like this one. Anyway, so those are my memoir books with awesome titles. And then I have a short stack of self-help slash inspirational books that have amazing titles. This one I think I got at a library book sale and I had to take this one to church with me and show it to a few people because I think it's amazing. It says, God has never failed me, but he sure scared me to death a few times by Stan Toller. I haven't read this yet, but this is a great title. I absolutely love it. And I think it's going to be kind of a humorous book on faith. So I had to get it when I saw it. I've had this for a few years now. I need to read it. And then a book on parenting that I've had on my TBR for a readathon or something and I didn't get it read a couple years ago and this I really want to read and I love the title it's called even June Cleaver would forget the lunchbox so I am 54 and even I am a little younger than leave it to beaver but it used to come on reruns after school and so I know exactly who June Cleaver is of course she's sort of the epitome of the perfect mom and this book is just basically saying you know give yourself a break you can't be the perfect mom even June Cleaver would forget something you know so it says cut yourself some slack and still raise great kids in the age of extreme parenting it says it's uh, workable solutions to the mommy madness and it's by Anne Dunwald PhD so again this is a fantastic title and then the last one no, I'm sorry, I have two more. One that I read, actually my first book, Tubathon, Eat That Frog. This title is fun because it's it's sort of a life skill, an illustration of a life skill. And I recognized exactly what they were talking about when I first saw this book because I remember a long time ago, my mom coming home from a conference and she said the speaker had talked about eating frogs and talking about your to-do list and how... You know, you're going to have to do things in life that are unpleasant 
and they referred to that, illustrated that as eating frogs. And one of the things was if you are swallowing frogs, if you have to swallow a lot of frogs, swallow the biggest one first, you know, get your biggest job done first. And so it just made a lot of sense to me. It really stuck with me over the years. And when I saw this book by Brian Tracy, I knew exactly what it was referring to. And I've read it and I've kept it and I, I need to revisit it because it's got some really good advice things that I've heard before, things that I know, but I love books like this because it reminds me to do things like this and it helps motivate me. And speaking of needing motivation, I have a constant need to declutter and organize. I have jokingly said that I hoard books on decluttering. Well, it's really not a joke. I do hoard books on decluttering. <laughs> But this is by far my favorite. It's one of the first books on decluttering, if not the first book on decluttering I ever got. It is written by the King of Clean. He is America's cleaning expert. I think he's in his 80s now. But this title is fantastic. Clutter's Last Stand by Don Aslett. And this book is so great. It's full of wonderful illustrations. It's so easy to read. I've read it multiple times and I absolutely love it. So anyway, these are my top, what is this, 15 books that are nonfiction that are on my shelves that I think have the best titles. Uh, oh, you know what? Those, you know what? If you're counting, you didn't count to 15 because I left two out, uh, three out. I left out one of the humorous books, which is kind of more an informational book, but it's got sort of a negative, positive, contradictory title, which I think is great. The Essential Book of Useless Information. It says, it's the most unimportant things you'll never need to know by Don Voorhees. So stuff like this just pulls me in. I love these contradictory book titles and it just sounds really fun. So then I have two other books that are animal related. The one, the first title is one I've read. I actually buddy read this with Amber Each Books and I love the title. It's so simple, but it's a play on words and it's perfect. It's called Kitty Cornered. And then the subtitle is also great. How Franny and five other incorrigible cats seized control of our house and made it their home. That is a fantastic title. And then this is a book I saw on Trina's channel from Between Chapters. She did a reenactment of a scene from this book my very first book, Tubathon, that I participated in. It had to be 2015. And I had, well, I found this book, I think at a Goodwill, and I absolutely love it. It's a cat book, a book of cat poems. I could pee on this. <laughs> and it is by, um, I have a hard time with this name, Francesco Marciliano. I think that's correct. I don't have my glasses on. But this is a super cute cat poem book with with pictures and you know not all the poems are as good as the title poem which is I could pee on this but still for every cat lover I think you need this book so I had to include these in the stack so anyway these are my top nonfiction books on my shelves with the best titles I'm going to have to come up with a better title for this video to condense that down but maybe top 15 nonfiction titles on my shelves. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Anyway, that's it for this video. I have more books, more videos coming up with great titles from my shelves. I'm going to do cozy mysteries. I'm going to do fiction and I might do middle grade. So that's all for now. I hope you are having a great day. Read a good book and God bless you.